ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಪರಮಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಭಗವತ್ ಪಾದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರ ತೀರ್ಥ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಥೇರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎ ಕಾಂಟೆಂಪರರಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೈಲ್ ದಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಪ್ಟಿಮಮ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾನ್ಫ್ಲಿಕ್ಟ್ ರೆಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಹೌ ಏಟೀನ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಪ್ರೀಚ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಯೋಗಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಎಟಿಮಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳು ಈವನ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಪಿಟೇಷನ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಯುಜ್ಯತೆ ಫಲಂ ಅನೇನ ಇತಿ ಕರಣ ವ್ಯುತ್ಪತ್ತಿಯ ಯೋಗ ಉಪಾಯಪರಹ ಜ್ಞಾನೋಪಾಯಪರಹ ಯುಜ್ಯತೆ ಫಲಂ ಅನೇನ ಇತಿ ಕರಣ ವ್ಯುತ್ಪತ್ತಿಯ ಯೋಗ ಉಪಾಯಪರಹ ಯೋಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಉಪಾಯ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟಾಲಿಟಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಟಿಮಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಡೆಫಿನಿಷನ್ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳು ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಎಟಿಮಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಣಿನೀಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಸೊ ಯೋಗ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ರೂಟ್ ಯುಜ ಯುಜ ಸಂಬಂಧೇ ಇಟ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟಾಲಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ರಿವಾರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಐ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ವ್ಯಾಯಾಮ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಯೋಗಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೆ ಲಿಂಕ್ ದಿ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ದಿ ಏಟೀನ್ ಉಪಾಯಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಏಟೀನ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ವುಡ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ದಟ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೀಟಾ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆರ್ ಯೋಗ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಸೈಕಾಲಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಇನ್ ಈಚ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಶನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಟು ಹಾವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ದ ಮೆಸೇಜಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಲೈಫ್ ನಾವು ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ಟು ರಿಕ್ಯಾಪಿಚುಲೇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ವಿಷಾದ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಾಯರು ಅಗೇನ್ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಸ್ ವಿಷಾದ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಮೋಹ ನಿಮಿತ್ತಕಾತ್ ಶೋಕಾತ್ ಎನ್ ಮನೋದೌರ್ಬಲ್ಯಂ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಸತಿ ಸರ್ವ ವ್ಯಾಪಾರೋ ಪರಮಃ ಭವತಿ ಸಹ ವಿಷಾದ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಡಿಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸ್ಸಿಲ್ಯೂಜನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಲೆಸ್ನೆಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಲೈಫ್ ಅರೈಸಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸಮ್ ವೇರ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಮಿಸ್ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಮಿಸ್ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ನೋಷನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸಿಚುವೇಶನ್ ರಾಂಗ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ರಾಂಗ್ಲಿ ಟೇಕನ್ ಸೊ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಥ್ರೂಔಟ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಡೀಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ರಿಮೂವ್ ದ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಕಂಪೋನೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೋಹ ಆರ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜರ್ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಟ್ರೂವಂಟ್ ಆಫೀಸರ್ ಆರ
dealing dealt with in Bhagavad Gita is to manage oneself, not managing others, as is done by the Western management science. Managing oneself is the most important and crucial dimension of management to be able to manage others. Now he goes in the he continues in the following sequence. One is to remove the moha. So the entire second adhyaya is meant to remove that moha. And once moha is gone, the sadness, shoka goes, goes away. Moha nimittakat, shokat. And once shoka goes, manodarbalya goes. The weakness of the mind goes. Once the manodarbalya goes, then his depression, his attitude of not doing anything goes. Then he prepares. So after clearing all these steps of removing the vishada of Arjuna, Krishna comes to the situation of telling him that he must act. He must do the duty as prescribed in his varna, that is as a kshatriya. His kshatriya as a kshatriya, his, uh, his duty is to destroy the adharma and establish the rule of law. So he does that throughout in the second adhyaya. And once the Krishna Arjuna is told that he has to perform his duty. And through Arjuna, Krishna tells all of us to perform our duties. Now question comes as to how, in what mental framework we must perform our duty. And how we should be prepared for performing our duties in this mental framework at all times, even with or without an advisor like Krishna. That is the main purpose of Bhagavad Gita. The entire Bhagavad Gita now tells us as to what should be the modality of performing the duties. I will deal with the different components of moha in due course of time, but I am telling the steps involved in the entire story, entire uh, treatise of Bhagavad Gita. So, first step is to consider Arjuna is being depressed, having vishada. Next step is to remove his moha and misconceptions and then get him ready to perform his duty. And then the question comes as to how, what should be the modality of performing duties? Why? There could be several ways of performing the duties. To give an example, in the office, a new officer comes and he performs his duty with lot of diligence with lot of attention to his duties, with respect for others. But an age-old officer in the uh, department could uh, function with a certain malice with his on his superiors, certain disrespect for the CEO, certain doubts about the corporate sector. And his performance would be quite different from the performance of the person who does it with good care, good attention, good concentration, good focus and with good respectful disposition towards everybody else. So therefore, the modality of performing the duty is important. So as I said, Bhagavad Gita is a behavioral science and next step is to see that we perform our duty in the proper mental framework. In performing karmas, karma, karma means the duty or any function of that matter. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said in the third and the in the fourth adhyaya that nobody remains without performance of karma function. Because even winking of the eyes is a karma, eating food is a karma, <coughs> talking is a karma and digestion is a karma. So, without karma, nobody can remain. That is the very fundamental principle which Bhagavad Gita preaches. And once we perform our karma, the modality in which we perform it becomes very important. And the there are two modalities, broadly speaking. One is called as pravritta, dharma, pravritta karma and another is called nivritta karma. Pravritta karma anushthana, nivritta karma anushthana. Pravritta karma anushthana means performance of a function, of a duty or any other function with complete obsession about the rewards, 
about some material benefits about some uh, ultimate goals and always being obsessed with that that is pravritta karma anushthana most of us working in the offices doing ho- work at home and earning incomes are engaged in pravritta karma anushthana because we have our eyes on the ultimate benefit that we get and we always ask whenever we have to do a new function we ask what is the benefit to me what is the benefit what is the reward i get out of it so therefore we are mostly engaged in pravritta karma anushthana and i will tell you later how rajoguna induces us to engage ourselves in pravritta karma anushthana and then the other category is nivritta karma anushthana nivritta karma anushthana both of these are simply categorized as sakama karma and nishkama karma sakama karma means a karma a function done with an ulterior objective in mind and nishkama karma is the one which is done without any ulterior objective in mind so nishkama karma or nivritta karma anushthana has got four components one is to do our functions uh with um, uh prescribed functions prescribed duties those days there were brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra four categories of varnas chatur varnam maya srishtam guna karma vibhaga cha krishna paramatma has said they are not by birth but they are by the categories of uh they, they are by the uh distribution or the categorization of of um, of uh, uh, rewards or categorization of the karma guna and karma attributes and the nature of the function so brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra brahmana are supposed to be engaged in education in learning in uh, training in research they are mostly in the intellectual activity only when they are engaged in intellectual activity they they uh, deserve to be called as brahmanas that is the fundamental definition of these varnas varnas ashram then kshatriya the one who does the valor the job with his shoulders is called as kshatriya then vaishya is the one who does work and uses his thighs to effort make effort and then shudra is the one who does his jobs of service and therefore he uses his the, the feet brahmano asya mukham asit padbhyam shudro ajayata vahubhyam kshatriya then pad padbhyam shudro ajayata uru vaishya like that the categorization of these originations of the varnas are meant dis- to describe only the nature of the activities they are they have nothing to do as per the classical definition of these varnas with the birth actually actually speaking and nowadays of course we are doing it by birth by family brahmin family and so on and so forth by f- for convenience it has become a, a birth based categorization but otherwise it is uh, i should say get based upon the functions the nature of the functions in fact some of us who are engaged in only trading activity or in activity of defense or administration are not fully brahmins so to say <laughs> brahma anati iti brahmana ana pana gatau the one who pursues the path of knowledge about brahman anyway that takes us to another area but brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra are the four categories and now we can have hundreds of vocations hundreds of hundreds of professions thousands of professions thousands of sectors of the input output table and each function we may be a clerk in the office we may be an accountant in the office we may be technical man in the office we may be administrator we may be economist we may be ceo we may be engineer we may be manager and we may be receptionist we may be peon we may be driver we may be servant a number of professions are defined and each profession has a certain duties prescribed and as soon as you join 
a an office a duty list is given to you you are supposed to perform these duties so varnashrama dharma would mean and ashrama would mean the lifestyle brahmacharya grahastha uh, anaprastha and sanyasa <coughs> brahmacharya is the one who which is who is engaged in the pursuit of education learning and grahastha the one who is married and leading a life of family and vanaprastha the one who sacrifices all the family life and goes to forests and sanyasa is the one who relinquishes everything and he reduces his claim on the resources of the society whereas nowadays of course most sanyasis claim more resources than what are warranted so these four categories of ashramas i would call them as four categories of lifestyles with different demands on the resources of the economy the brahmacharya would require very less resources and grahastha would require more resources but he would produce more also then vanaprastha would require still less resources and he would produce a value product and sanyasa is supposed to expect very little resources from the society but distribute values and normative knowledge and ethics in the society so these were meant to have an orderly socio economic ethical and um, uh, spiritual Uh, life uh, which is harmonious and which is uh, very self contained kind of thing but now we can have thousands of categories of professions and thousands of categories of lifestyles depending upon how many how much resources we claim on uh, on on uh, uh, on the other uh, on uh, on the entire society but anyway now the point i'm saying is that the various duties are prescribed and you have to perform your duties how we must perform it in the nivrutta karma anushthana framework nivrutta karma anushthana means it has got four components one is the first one is to say that you must conform to the prescribed duty list you cannot go beyond that if you go to a corporate sector join an office in the government you are given a duty chart duty sheet and you are supposed to come at 10 o'clock attend to the files and deal with the ceo and what whatever senior officers are there and whatever prescribed duty are there they are there meant prescribed in that duty sheet and therefore the uh, and 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 the, the, it has to be conformed to you cannot go beyond that an accountant should not um, babble with the issues of reception the accountant cannot babble with the issues of management the accountant or manager the manager is supposed to conduct the management part of it the economist is supposed to do the analysis so you cannot think of each one dabbling on the others you have to perform your prescribed duty that is the first component in the nivrutta karma anushthana the second is you must do it without obsession about the rewards this is a very important component that is why the bhagavad gita tells us karmanne va adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phalahe tur bhuhu ma te sango astu akarmani karmanne va adhikarah your right is only to perform your duty you know the westerners have very mischievously misinterpreted this prescription of karma they have said that indian social the mythology indian adhyatmic system teaches us as to how to exploit the labor you tell the labor only to struggle and work hard and don't worry about the rewards no it's not like that you must work hard with focus on your duties and not expect the rewards to come out of without performing your duties karmanneva adhikarah ma phaleshu kadachana you know adhikara is an eligibility you are eligible only to perform your duty you are not eligible to uh, get the rewards worry about the rewards ma phaleshu kadachana you know phaleshu is in bahuvachana karmani is in ekavachana 
that means you are supposed to do your duty but the falas which come as a result of the efforts of many are many and therefore you cannot expect the rewards of all of them to you you cannot expropriate that is one way of looking at it another is you must have only that much reward which is marginally attributable to you that is marginal returns theory theory of margin on in the economics so ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phalahetur bhuhu ma karma phalahetuhu means karma phalahetu is paramatma the one who is ultimately responsible for giving you the rewards so don't expect yourself to be the provider of the rewards the rewards come as a result of the efforts of many and don't obsess be obsessed about the rewards no then i will not do the karma itself then mate sango astu akarmani akarmani means not performing arjuna was once nourishing the idea that he would not like to fight he would go and become a sanyasi and go bhikshatana bring the arms and start enjoying the rewards for his uh, efforts and enjoy and live life life happily why should he kill the enemies and get so much of wrong things done and so on that was his argument don't don't do that because that is not your duty you must conform to your duties don't think of running away from the duty mate sango astu akarmani later on bhagavad gita says how even when you perform the duty you should not think that you are doing it but the system is making you to function the karmanya karmaya eh paschet akarmani cha karmaya that says in performing your duty you think that it is being done by the system a karma a akaro vishnu ruddhishtha the paramatma is responsible for making you to function and the system the corporate sector the ceo the entire body of um, trainers they are responsible for making you to perform and not you so in performance of your duty you think about their role don't think that you are doing alone yourself then akarmani cha karmaya the one which you have not done you should also think that there is some function done by the entire system so i am trying to re- recap these terms in the context of the corporate sector and the management karman akarmaya pasit akarmani cha karmaya sabuddhiman manushyeshu sayukta krishna karma krita that person is the performer of all the functions all the deeds and therefore the uh, the second component of not doing things with the obsession for, about the rewards is a very important element of the karma theory of bhagavad gita karma yoga now to give an example counter example suppose you are always obsessed about the rewards think of a student who is told that he must get 99% 95% to be eligible to go to iit or engineering or further colleges and so on nowadays the cut off points for commerce and arts is also very high so if you are tell him that he must get those marks then only there is future for him that's fine you must keep the goals you must keep the ambitions you must be very aspiring but don't keep that aspiration or goal always in your mind that should not determine your functions when you are doing your duty so the student has to do his duty of studying studying hard you must not think of the rewards the rewards will come on their own they in the, in the sense that if you are obsessed about the rewards and then you will deviate from doing your function then the result is that you try to find out some dubious ways of means of re- realizing the rewards take for example an officer in the corporate sector he wants promotion obviously every officer wants promotion but if he thinks of only the promotion and not attending to his files his functions of every day as prescribed by him in his duty list then he would think of various other dubious ways of dealing with it he must find out how should i please please the boss if i go and 
take the mithai dabba to his house on diwali days on his birthdays on festival days or try to do something for his wife so he would try to find out ways and means of avoiding his duty and trying to please the boss and get the reward so the prescription that you should not be obsessed about the rewards is not meant to say that you should not have an eye on the rewards you should not have the ambitions or the prescriptions of the goals but you must focus on your duties it's a very very crucial element of the nivrutta karma anusthana nivrutta karma anusthana third component is to avoid obsession about the rewards and the fourth component is in uh, the modality of functioning of doing your work is to do bhagavad aradhana buddhi it's a bring in robustness in your attitudes of doing the work so you may replace bhagavan by corporate sector when you are functioning in a corporate sector you must always um, uh, uh, see to it that the corporate sector benefits not you we have seen how the the managers or the ceos um the heads of the departments or the ministers have been ruined have ruined the whole system and their own career when they start getting using the occasion to get their personal rewards fulfilled so keep a robust objective of serving the cause of the society serving the cause of the mankind the serving the cause of the corporate sector serving the cause of the nation if you keep these robust objectives then your intensity of performance of duties becomes very great that is the purpose of telling that you must have bhagavad aradhana buddhi why bhagwan because bhagwan is the symbol is the icon of perfection in every element there is a bhagwan for instance when i am doing my lecture there is a bhagwan in it bhagwan stands for the highest proficiency highest level of the um, uh, the skills highest level of the character highest level of quality so if i deliver my lecture very perfectly then i say that i have gone near the bhagwan so bhagavad aradhana buddhi that is why the entire remaining parts of bhagavad gita tells you why bhagwan is great the vibhuti yoga vishrupa darshana yoga ज्ञान विज्ञान योगा क्षेत्र क्षेत्र योगा ऑल दीज टेल यू एज टू हाउ यू मस्ट वाई यू यू मस्ट कंसिडर भगवान एज ग्रेट यू नो द एंटायर भगवद गीता एज ए सेड इज ए ट्रीट आइज ऑन ह्यूमन बिहेवियर ह्यूमन बिहेवियर इन इन अवर सिस्टम वी फाइंड ह्यूमैनिटी द नेचर एंड डिविनिटी थ्री कॉम्पोनेंट्स वी हैव टू डील विद द नेचर nature is the world around you and divinity is the adhi daivika or adhyatmika component of every element so you must treat every activity as an activity in which there is bhagwan in my lecture there is a bhagwan adhya uh, abhimani devata that is why i told the other day agni agni devata and agnantargata uh, vishnu or the narayana so in the in the so the this this uh, entire man, human behavior has to be concerned with the man the nature man and the man means man and woman and the nature which is the world around you and the divinity which governs the govern the, the the world so the entire bhagavad gita tells you how to deal with these three components to make your life happy in this world and also in the subsequent world so the third component of bhagavad aradhana buddhi is meant to bring you a certain kind of modesty in your activity certain kind of robustness certain kind of detachment certain kind of uh, um, uh, very uh, laudable goals in your activities and therefore the third component the fourth component is is still very better which says that you must not have the uh, the the feeling that you are alone doing it svatantra kartritva abhimana rahitya the fourth component in the nivrutta karma anusthana modality is that you must not think that you are alone doing it you know i had been to uh, japan 
I wrote a letter for the Japanese government on um, uh, the reforms in India in the 1970s, in the, in the 1990s, when the reforms were initiated by the then government with Dr. Manmohan Singh as the leader. The entire world was baffled, but India has gone from license permit rise to a market economy and has introduced any deregulations and so on. And I was one of the persons who was responsible in some way in making these ideas. In fact, the entire deregulation started in 1977. When I was member secretary of the Alexander Committee on Import-Export Policies, we delicensed a number of products, brought in a number of OGL and so on and so forth. So that, that's why. Uh, but, but, but the, then, then I was invited to Japan by the Japanese government. The, my paper for Japan government was translated into Japanese and circulated extensively. And then, as a gesture of recognition of my contribution, they invited me and I visited Yokohama, Osaka, Nagasaki. I visited the site of the hydrogen bomb, atom bomb explosion and so on and so forth. But I found in one of the factories in the Hiroshima, in the Toyo Kogoya car manufacturing factory and the Fanac Robert manufacturing factory. There used to be uh, in every department, there used to be a, 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 a table, a, a board in which names were written and a number of uh, uh, number of suggestions that were made by the respective floor level workers was given. And that is how they make the workers participation in the management of the corporate sector. And, uh, and even the CEO came with us. He took me around the entire corporate sector from the uh, shop floor and we did not disturb the process of activity down below. And what I want to say is that there was no feeling that he was superior. He was almost like the white collared person, but he behaved like the um, lower level category people along with them. And then they all were saying, we did it. They never said that I did it. And that is the culture that's called as the Japanese industrial culture. In fact, Japanese industrial culture is supposed to be characterized by three C's. Commitment, competence, and uh, capability. Commit, uh, commitment, competence, and uh, uh, so the, there are the, the, the uh, comprehensiveness. You know, so the, the the same thing is stated in our yoga. Yoga karma sukhaushalam. And uh, so the Japanese system conforms to the traditional system of management and it uh, does not allow each one whereas in the american system which is called as taylor system uh, the, the, there are uh, certain prescriptions from the top and you have to always be subservient to the top person whereas the japanese industrial culture system the uh, instructions the ideas come from below and they get implemented that is why the Japanese industrial culture became very prosperous and it, 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 was, it, it conquered the world uh, in, the, in the immediate post-war period and all their industries were established in the USA, in Europe and other places. And of course, for various reasons now, Japan also has been having the decay and the depression. The, but what, what is important is the work culture. Ultimately, the, so the four components are doing the prescribed duty and doing it without excessive obsession about rewards. And third is doing it with the robust objective of serving the mankind or serving the corporate sector, serving the nation and serving the Bhagavan. And fourth is without having vanity that you are uh, doing, uh, doing it all alone. We did it. So these four components define the work culture. The work culture for uh, this one. Now the, the the questions come, many questions come. When Arjuna is asked to give up his moha, moha was for various reasons. 
One is he did not have the conception that Jiva is Nitya and Paramatma is also Nitya. And he thought <coughs> that Jiva dies. Krishna says, no, Jiva does not die. Natvevaham jatunasam natvam neme janadhipahan nachayva nabhavishyamahan sarve vayamata param. And then if Deha destroys and therefore I dies, I, I, I feel sorry for it. Because Mohana Mittakat Shokat. When I say that I get the uh, uh, sorrow because the, the body dies, then Krishna tells him that no, the body does not uh, die. You, if this body goes, you get another body. So, Kaumare Yavanam Jara Tathadi Hantara Praptihi. Dehino Svinyatha Dehe Kaumare Yavanam Jara Tathadi Hantara Praptihi Dhiras Tatrana Mushati. So, in that reason, body leaves, Jiva leaves the body and he loses this body. No, that, but then he gets another body, which is better. So, because Deha dies, you cannot be having the remorse. No, 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 all these people will not be there in front of me and I will not be able to talk to them and I lose the opportunity of being happy, relaxing myself and uh, spending time with them. Then he says, you know, Sukha Dukha are not due to contacts of the sense organs with the objects. Matras, Parshas, Tukaunteya, Sitoshna, Sukha Dukha, Daha, Agama, Apayino, Anityaha, Tamsitriksha, Swabharata. I am not going to into the uh, technical details of the meanings of these slokas, but the messages I convey to you. Matras, Parshaha, Miyante, Iti, Matraha, Vishayaha, Sparshaha, Tesham, contacts with the Indriyas. Indriyas, and the sense organs, that is the panchajnana indriyas, that is the eyes, nose, mouth, sparsha, grana, and, uh, karana, all these are sense organs of knowledge. And they have respectively rupa, rasa, gandha, sparsha, shabda, etc. as their vishayas. And so the contact between the sense organs and the vishayas is not responsible for sukha and dukkha, simply because I see an object. You know, we see many times on the television, people dying in the in the accidents. I have mentioned that earlier. And uh, merely by that process, you will not get the uh, uh, sukha dukha as much as the people who are attached to them. So, because it is mine. So, matra asparsha astu kaunteya, sitoshna sukha dukha daha. Do you think that these are meant for the uh, sukha and dukkha merely by the contact of the sense organs with the objects? No. Abhimanena sahita hayeva. Abhimana is responsible. Abhimana means the uh, feeling that it is mine. So, Rairu gives very beautiful definition of the word abhimana. Visheshu shobhanadhyasana mitta sneha rupena va aritvadi brahmahetuka dvesha rupena va dehendriyanta karaneshu mamanta tichaya hetuka viveka rupena va abhimanena. Various categories of abhimanas. Where you should not think that it is mine, you think that it is, um, uh, get the, the feeling that it is mine. And then you, where you think he is an enemy and uh, develop an attitude of hatred, uh, but they, it's not like that. And you get a feeling that this is my body, it is my Indriya, my Antakkarana, my people. And then that Abhimana. To give you an example of Abhimana, if the judge is sitting on the court of law, and the culprit is his close relative. Then if he gets into this abhimana, that he is my relative, my um, cousin, sister's um, brother or um, son, uh, then I cannot uh, perform my duty. So while performing the duty, don't bring in the abhimana. That is why Krishna tells Arjuna that give up the abhimana that Kauravas are your own people. You are here to take the uh, take your decision as a kshatriya and your decision and action 
should be conforming to the prescribed duties of a kshatriya of destroying the adharmis and establishing the rule of dharma therefore you cannot have abhimana so sukha and dukha arise out of the abhimana and you give up that abhimana and then you will be able to perform your duty so like this he prepares him for the, the, the moha moha is removed once moha is removed he keeps on telling him that you give up your shoka why is shoka in three or four shlokas shlokas he keeps on t- telling that you should now give up your shoka once तस्मादीनम विदित्वैनम नानु शोचितु मर्षसि तथा पित्वम महाबाहो नैनम शोचितु मर्षसि जातस्य हि ध्रुवो मृत्युः ध्रुवम जन्म मृतस्य च तस्माद परिहार्य अर्थे नत्वम शोचितु मर्षसि सो द सेकंड स्टेज आफ्टर मोहा इज शोक वंस मोहा मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग हैज गॉन यू गिव अप योर शोक एंड वंस शोक इज गिवन अप देन इमीडिएटली ही जंप्स टू द next step of his prescription that you perform your functions manodaurbalya give up your manodaurbalya so once he gives up his manodaurbalya and then he asks him to perform his duty what will happen hato va prapshasi swargam jetva va bhokshase mahim ato yuddhaya yujhasva yoga karmasu kausalam and now in he defines yoga in different ways yoga is karmasu kaushalam that means doing anything absolutely efficiently is yoga and then he arjuna asks the question you know the vedas prescribed only karmas you are now telling me to be performing the karma karmas as bhagavad aradhana buddhi and without any obsession about rewards but vedas tell you a number of actions with awards he says the putra kamo ejet one who wants uh, sons should do this yajna and then if he assess kamo yajnam ejet there are many ways or many many occasions where yajnas tell you to perform duties to 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 perform certain functions for realizing certain objectives and also yajnas vedas tell you to pursue the lower gods certain durga devi or other inferior gods other than vishnu to please them and get the rewards you know what they are called as trividyas those who consider vishnu as the sarvottama are bhagavatas as per our vaishnav tradition and all others are called trividyas so then the question comes the vedas prescribe karmas for ulterior motive why do you say that karma should be done without any ulterior motives they should be done only for pleasing the god then he says traigunya vishaya vedaha निस्त्रैगुण्यो भवाजुन निर्द्वंदो नित्यसत्वस्थो निर्योग क्षेमात्मवान्ज इज काकुस्वर त्रैगुण्य विषया वेदा इफ दर् हैविंग त्रैगुण्य दट ईज सत्जस्तमो गुणाज इन देर विकाराज एज देर सब्जेक्ट मैटर देन इट विल नॉट बी इट विल नॉट बी अप्रोप्रिएट फॉर कृष्णा टू आस्क अर्जुन टू बिकम निस्त्रैगुण्य that means to move away from the uh, trigunyas if trigunya is only the uh, the approach of uh, uh, performing karmas then why should he ask him to move away from the karma from the trigunya then no nis trigunya vishaya trigunya meva visham tad yapayanti iti the one who is give the karmas if they are done with the goals in mind without bhagavad aradhana buddhi with vanity that i did it leaving us all aside all the four components that is a prescribed function and not having obsession about rewards and not having um, the bhagavad aradhana buddhi and doing it for personal benefits and having 
the vanity that I did it. If it is done like that, they generate karma lepas. And once karma lepas generate, they make you fall in the daldal of karmas. So, Trayugunya meva visham. The karmas done without these four elements of nistre, of uh, uh, nishkama karma, of nivritta karma anushthana, they would generate in you a certain karma lepas. What are the karma lepas? Karma lepas are the kama, krodha, lobha, moha, madha, matsara. These corollaries which generate in you. And kama, krodha would lead you to do all wrong things. That's why when later Arjuna asks what makes people do wrong things, then Krishna says, kama esha, krodha esha, rajoguna samudbhavaha. Mahasano Mahapapma Vidhyayana Mihavairinam Sattvaguna, Rajoguna, Tamoguna are the three gunas which are responsible for the activities in this world. And their vikaras are Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsara. And Rajoguna generates this Kama and Krodha. And if you do your jobs so that so as to generate these corollaries of Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Mohamada, Matsara, you will be ruined. That is how he tells Arjuna that you must do your functions in the Nivritta Karma Anushthana. Yogastha Kuru Karmani Sangam Tektva Dhananjaya Siddhya Siddhyoho Samohutva Samatvam Yoga Uchati. And then as a result of this, he always says that the uh, mental attitude for enabling you to perform the karmas in the Nivritta Karma Anushthana framework becomes important. How should I get that mental attitude so that I always engage myself in doing my prescribed duties in the Nivritta Karma Anushthana framework that then he brings in the concept of Sthita Pradnya. Sthita Pradnyasya Kabhasha Samadhisthasya Keshava ಸಂಹರತೆ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾರ್ಥೇಭ್ಯ ತಸ್ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿ ನಾ ಯು ಫರ್ದರ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಸ್ ದ ಥೀರಿ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಟು ಸೇ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ಮನಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಬಿಕಮ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೋಟಿವೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಎ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ಮನಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಅಲೌ Indriyas to go wherever they like and manas to go wherever it goes and don't allow buddhi to give you the proper reasoning uh, in the process of analysis, then you will be ruined. Uh, he, he, he gives these three components of our body should be always kept in proper control, in proper shape, then only you will be able to perform the duties in a prescribed manner in the nivritta karma anushthana framework so the entire bhagavad gita continues i will try to narrate how interaction between indriyas manas and buddhi becomes responsible for generating a certain kind of behavior as i said behavioral science you must deal with the different components of uh, the behavior and use your indriyas manas and buddhi to uh, 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 to interact in a particular manner so that they give you your aptitude to perform your function in the nivrata karma anushthana framework so coming to the management principle there also every person who works management is not just managing oneself is not just concerned with the so called managers it is concerned with everybody with the labor 
with the clerk with the receptionist with the ceo with the accountant everyone is governed with the word manager when we talk about managing oneself because they have to manage themselves in a particular manner by keeping the interaction between the sense organs mind and intellect in a proper way that is how the karma theory gives us a certain um, optimum work culture and enables us to resolve the conflicts that arise in the in the corporate sector if everyone is doing his duty uh, as per the nivritta karma anusthana framework then there is no scope for f- conflicts the conflicts arise because when there is mismatch between the expectations and the actions we know that when you expect something for your wife to do for your son to do for your daughter to do for your colleague to do for your neighbor to do and if they don't do that way then you start getting shoka and then you are manodaurbalya and depression comes so the the mismatch comes is the cause for all depression and that arises out of the behavior of indriya manas and buddhi in a particular manner we will elaborate on this further in the subsequent uh, lectures and i will stop here and uh, because i have to deal with the different yogas if karma yoga is called as bahiranga sadhana dhyana yoga which is useful for managing oneself atma sanyama yoga controlling the activities of mind indriyas and allowing buddhi to grow to give you the proper reasoning that can be done by practicing dhyana yoga every day that is given in the sixth canto and every manager who wants to have an efficient management system for his own self has to practice dhyana yoga and every day for few moments sit in one corner and try to meditate upon the most perfect object that is bhagwan in in a very uh, uh, peaceful and quiet manner i will tell about the detailed tips of the atma sanyama yoga that is dhyana yoga given in the sixth canto in due course of time so but in any case the entire bhagavad gita is an integrated whole of different upayas which ultimately lead you to the performance of your duties in the nivrutta karma anusthana framework though the technical jargonist terms cannot be avoided but they must be interpreted in a manner which are relevant for our everyday life with this i will stop yatra yogeshwara krishna yatra partho dhanurdhara tatra shri vijayo bhutihi dhruvani tirmatirmama shri krishna arpanamastu